Right, week eight, video five, program design one. So in this video, I'm just going to introduce the topic of program design, which is a very difficult topic indeed. As I say here at the very beginning, it's a black art. There are lots of different theories about program design, and three of the methods that we'll talk briefly about are the idea of top-down design, where you start with a general description of what it is that you wish to do and you break it into pieces, smaller and smaller pieces, and in the event, in the, in the end of all that, you have a whole heap of functions and the whole program just runs. It's easy as that, ha ha. Uh, Bottom-up design is kind of the opposite approach, which says, well, gee, this is a real difficult problem. I'm not quite sure where to start. Let me begin by writing some easy functions to get my confidence up. Like, for example, I have to write a chess playing program. I'll start writing some code to work out whether a particular square on a chessboard is under attack from some other square or something like that. And hopefully the assumption is if you write enough of these and work your way up, you'll eventually have a chess playing program. A third method, which is very common nowadays, the idea of object-oriented design. This won't make any sense until we've done uh, object-oriented programming in the around about second to last week. And this is driven by the data. It's kind of bottom-up as well. We might, for example, define a class chessboard. We might define a class chess piece and uh, work our way up from there. So again, slightly or somewhat bottom-up approach, but it's driven by the data that you're manipulating, whereas this one traditionally driven by the procedural steps that you're taking. And as it says here, you can mix methods. I'd go one step further and say you are going to mix methods whether you like it or not. It's almost impossible to make any one of these work as a pure process. There is always some degree of iteration. Right, now before I actually go on to top-down design, I'm going to talk a little bit about the word design, because the very word design is problematic. It means different things to different people. So on this particular slide, I went to a web page, the Wikipedia page on design, and I did a word cloud on it. So word clouds pull out the most common words from the page, and they set their size according to the frequency of occurrence of those words. So I'd like you to pause the video now, study that particular slide, see if you can get a feel for what sort of view of design is being taken here. Suggest possibly who might have written that article. See if you can figure out something about them. And if you've done that, I'm going to carry on and say the key thing here, obviously, is that design is a process. It's something you do in order to create a product. So the word engineering features. There are some philosophies. <laughs> yes, I said that right. Philosophies involved here, but it has a clear purpose. There is some goal. There are some methods achievable, methods to get there. It's a rational process. You have some, possibly have some model going on. It's very much an engineering view. This is what we do to build a something. Want to build a bridge? Right, we need to work out what the traffic densities are, what the weight-bearing properties must be, what the length, obviously that's kind of important, it should get to the other side, and things like that. And bingo, we go through this process and we have a bridge. No problem. But there are other views of design. Here's another one here. Again, pause the video, see if you can figure out what person wrote this. So, and I'm going to carry on with my view of it, I took this from a web page, as you can see, demystifying usability. So this is a user-centric view, as you can see, user-centric view of design. So when you were building this bridge, you didn't go out and talk to all the truck drivers about what they personally felt about bridges and how their emotional reaction to various bridges was. This one here says, well, the use is important, and we need to know what they think. Is this the right user experience? when you present them with this particular product. And this is a very important strategy within software development. It's one thing to have a program that actually has all the required functionality, but if the users hate it, it's not going to sell very well or it isn't even going to get used. So social processes are involved. Experience is a key factor. There's a key term here, agility. Agile development strategies are one that, ones that can adapt if the user doesn't like what's happening. So, ooh, the user didn't like that approach, I'll try this one again, rather than getting locked into a particular strategy or sequence of steps. So one of the big problems with software design that was made uh, in, the, in the early stages was that uh, engineering approaches were, turned out not to work too well because a lot of 
Software development didn't work that way at all. The user was much more important and other differences that I don't have time to go into. And yet a third take on what design is, there's this slide here, which again, pause the video, see if you can figure out who wrote this one, what their particular take on life is. And when you've done that, hopefully you'll realise that this is a more artistic view of what design is about. The word beautiful, aesthetics, like. So this was user oriented, but user more in the sense of the uh, overall experience, whether it actually usability. This is more the aesthetics of the product. And one of the th things the word Apple iPhone comes in here, that iPhone and on Apple generally succeeded on was because people actually liked it. So that puts the focus on the art side of things. So those are just three different takes on what design is, and all of them are important. And you mustn't lose track of that. It's one thing to think you have a, a formal process, but if the product isn't liked by the user, or if it looks crummy, which is going to result in the same thing, basically nobody's going to buy it or use it. Right, moving back to the specific instance of a, a certain design strategy, that of top-down design. So in the last couple of videos, we looked at how we can take an existing program and break it down into functions. In an ideal world, we don't do that. We start by this sort of thing, def main. What have we got to do? We've got to analyse a program. Analyse program. And now we've got to write a function, analyse program. OK, def analyse program. Uh, what does that consist of? OK, uh, we're going to count the for loops, we're going to um, count the whiles, and so on. And we continue now, how do we count fours, def count fours, and we, we write the code top down. Great in theory, it assumes you know where you're going, which actually uh, a lot of the time in software you don't, because you're in brand new problem domains where nobody's actually solved the problems yet. So uh, it's a fragile process but it's something we aim for. So when I'm writing programs, I try to write them this way, accepting that I'm not going to get it right all the time or even a large percentage of the time, perhaps. So this is what this slide says. We write it right the first time. And it may be that our count fours, we just go pass um, and we do some basic testing. We can do all our functions like that. It'll, it'll run, count whiles, and that particular bit of code runs just fine. Um, it doesn't do anything, and so we ins it can insert functionality into that and slowly build up our program that way. So this is called hierarchical decomposition, or top-down design is what we're generally calling it, and you'll do a little bit of that in this week's lab. In practice, as I said, and this is the important thing, we usually have to use a mix of these. So we're not going to get it right, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to back up, and that means we're going to have to restructure our code, refactor which in turn, although we don't have time to do that in this course, involves having to have in place some testing processes to make sure we're not breaking functionality when we refactor the code. So just continuing the story, we state the whole problem, that was the analysed program, decide logically how it would work and translate the bits into code step by step. So we finish up with statements, functions. It might be that we have to collect, pull a whole heap of those out and make them into a module, uh, which has the low-level stuff for analysing a program. And we import that module. And then, as is the key thing here, says we're going to keep refactoring to improve the design. You never get it right the first time. Whoops, I jumped ahead. I didn't mean to jump ahead. That's all I have for this video. In the next video, I'll take you through a sort of worked example of top-down design. Thanks for watching. Bye.